listen to me if you want to live. Quit being offended and listen. Travis Wayne Goodsell. You guys don't see me as a prophet. Not in the Book of Mormon sense. You've uh, been conditioned to believe that only the prophets are those who lead the church. So when you read your Book of Mormon, uh, you come across Lehi, and you think, well, he was a leader of the church. He was among the prophets. And then Nephi, who wasn't the firstborn birthright blessing son, you say, well, you know, hey, it was supposed to be him because Laman was bad. Did Laman see himself as bad? Exactly. <coughs> and then Abinadi, and then Samuel the Lamanite, they weren't leaders of the church. Not even Abinadi. King Noah was the leader of the church. He was President Nelson. He had his twelve apostles, of whom Alma was a part of. And despite that, Alma said, I'm only going to preach the words of Abinadi. And so, in these latter days, as they are in the latter days, the signs have happened. We're experiencing the fulfillment of prophecies, the destructions, the wickedness of the Mormons to attack those who try to say, hey guys, you need to listen to me. Destruction is coming. And so the only thing we're waiting for is the actual destruction and the exodus. And so I'm trying to get it through to you guys now. There's no time for a step-by-step, line-upon-line, precept-upon-precept approach anymore. This is it. If you don't have the oil for your lamps, you're not going to understand. You're going to continue to be offended. You're going to continue to reject, continue to refuse, continue to mock. Because you just don't get it. You didn't take the word and find out if it's true. You just assumed the word was true. You created new words, altered the original words, and call it true. So, I was supposed to be gone on last Tuesday, the 11th. <clears throat> I had known about that date, but I thought I was protected with my federal filing. Also, the law informed me that uh, I was supposed to be protected in the courts. Uh, my enemy, however, does not want to follow the law. And so, I'm still working on some processes with the extended time they gave me. I can't count on them. Look what happened the first time around. And so, during this time, it's now the final deadline that I've been waiting for. Because from the beginning, when I first learned that, hey, oh my god, we're in it. It was a situation of uh, being overwhelmed with everything that I needed to do. And I tried to get some of it, and just being overwhelmed just collapsed. Now I have an actual deadline. As before, things just kept going and going, and I didn't know how much I had. And things got bad because people wanted me gone. But now I have an actual date. The enemy has set the date for me. So I will be censored. You know, it's 
interesting how people in authority think that, oh, we're not taking away your agency, we're not punishing you. When you deprive somebody of life, liberty, and property, you're punishing them. I will be censored. That's a deprivation. On the 28th. I will have to abandon everything that you see and everything you don't see. I can't carry all this. I can't move. I don't have the money to move. There's no place to live. No room in the inn. And yet they don't care. You know, they're in denial. They'll say, hey, let us know. We'll do a one-time move for you to wherever you get settled in. Yeah. They know my situation. They know my finances. They have to. The landlord and the property manager. They know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly how evil they are. They know they're lying to get me out. And they know that they have to go through the courts. So, yes, I could stand my ground. And the West Valley City Police will come with guns blazing, hoping to blow me away, and then claim, oh, we were scared for our lives, so we shot them. And then Sim Gill will say, oh, all right. Justified kill. Despite the webcam that'll show that I was unarmed and saying you need a court order, get a court order. Where's your court order? And so yeah, I could stay here. But if you don't know my story, last year the landlord tried to chase me out by threatening to take my life with the air unit purposely did not do anything about it hoping that I would just move away she knows my economic situation she knows I can't move so she's punishing me for not moving do they honestly think I'm just gonna walk away from all my possessions and just go to the streets and die that's what they want it's just amazing the hatred the pure evil in people's hearts that they don't care about another person's life that they would destroy it and ruin it and so yes federal judge destroyed my life he knew I won the case he knew the church knew because they were planning to flee just in case the judges weren't fully in their pocket as they wanted but nope, judges proved loyal to the church and said crime is not a crime, default is not default, <laughs> obstructing the case is not obstructing the case. And I just, I haven't even bothered to open it up yet to see what his excuse was. <clears throat> I mean, he's got to explain how he's bypassing the default of the council, defense council. They filed late. It's an automatic win for me. And then to explain Judge First being assigned to the case after she got fired and was recused from all other cases. And then for Judge First to just be silent. And then have another judge come in whom they personally hand-picked and extorted to do the job of dismissing me. And she did it as you saw me get furious as she claimed that I filed late. And then the judges all were saying, oh, you have to respond within a certain date, otherwise you're in default, and default means you automatically lose and accept the, the results. They mock me. 
because they know that the defense counsel was in default. And so for Judge Waddups, he was supposed to recuse himself. He's Mormon. You can't have this kind of a case, a RICO conspiracy case, and have a Mormon sitting on the bench against the church. And he wouldn't recuse himself. And so he's got to explain that. He's supposed to, required by law, to explain his affiliation with the church. And like I said, I haven't even bothered to open it. I don't know what his excuse was. I could file a grievance, but the deadline for my silence is too soon. I mean, I'd just be filing it. I'd never get the results back. I won't live here anymore. And he knew that. That's why he gave his decision when I would find out about it the morning of the so-called hearing without the courts by the landlord. And so, yeah, if you saw the video when I was going over it with you, I, I thought I had to pack and go. Then I got sick. And so now it's extended. Uh, it's just... And Mormons, you know, they don't, they don't get it. I put the video, said, thumbs up for... LDS Mormon crime and again you, s you can see it for yourself I allowed the thumbs up and thumbs down to be seen and so you'll see the thumbs up and you'll see those who got played as chumps and put the thumbs down because those who don't want Mormons to commit crime they're not going to put a thumbs down right you're just going to leave it alone just come to my video just to see the Mormons that want crime, want the church to get away with crime, want the church to be the church of Lucifer and do whatever they want with him without being punished. And so as a result I've been able to find out some more stuff about what's going on and have been able to warn you even more with more videos since then and of course YouTube their employees are on full alert to do whatever they want to me uh, they've hidden the numbers for the comments that I've held they won't show the numbers so I have to click on it to find out if anybody's commented <laughs> it's just the abuse just never stops and I knew this was going to come when I lose I knew I'm going to be fully retaliated against and they're taking it slow seeing what they can get away with and it'll increase and continue to grow just like cancer and that's what happens when you don't stand up to bullies they get worse And when you're in a position where you're not more powerful than a bully, your life's over. Because the bully will either beat you to death, or you'll have to flee for your life. Never go back to school, or wherever the bully is, back to work. I mean, it's a shock when you've lived a life that you haven't been bullied, and then all of a sudden you get your first bullying. And the older you are, uh, the more shock you experience because you've lived a longer life without being bullied. And seeing it on TV shows or on movies, it's not the same. Because you don't experience it for yourself. Because you know yourself, you know you didn't aren't bullying people, you're being bullied. And so you don't understand why somebody would bully you when you've done nothing to them and you've done nothing wrong. 
And that's the whole thing about bullies. That's why they do it, is they pick on the easy targets first. But uh, in my life, growing up, I was among the largest in class. I had to sit in the back, stand in the back for the photos. And so my size alone scared people from bullying me. Uh, but uh, the manner in which my parents raised me as bullies themselves in the Mormon church uh, had me living in fear. I just, nobody knew it because I was so strong, so tall as a result. You know, I told you about the mercy game. But those days were gone when I left home. So, <clears throat> the prophets are not talking to us. They're saying, go back to the temple. You need the temple. Get to the temple. That's not going to save you from the destruction that's coming. Seriously, we got work for the dead. Do, does the church not believe in that? Why are they so focused on getting you in the temples to do your your own endowments, to go on missions, to get sealed? Why the rush? Why now? During a pandemic, why are they rushing? Why are they putting our lives at risk? And the answer is simple. It's the keystone on the arch of the doorway of the Salt Lake Temple. That's your answer. And again, Mormons get upset with me. I'm the only one who's warning you Mormons. There are others who do general warnings, telling you to listen to the prophets. Like I said, the prophets are silent. They're all vague. And Mormons have to stretch their words to mean what it doesn't mean. And you witness that yourself with his October conference or videos he did between times saying this will be a memorable conference in April with the bicentennial and then he makes the comment oh, I never expected it would be this memorable yeah well if he didn't expect it why did you why are you saying and coronavirus is the fulfillment of his prophecy it wasn't a prophecy something being memorable is not a prophecy saying that hey we just had a sign or a sign is coming on the 21st of August 2017 for one example <coughs> this refers to one of the three days of darkness of the sun being darkened and then informing you of others that come along letting you know that these are the signs of the latter days so that you will know of its coming so that you can be preparing yourself physically not spiritually you know, the word is spirit it's seed you have to fulfill it you have to make it real you have to prove that it's correct identify it as true So when the word talks about signs in the heavens, then yes, if you've got one with a specific date given to you, like Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, you have to include Jupiter in that as the baby, then yeah, you can identify the signs. You can identify the characters on earth whom they symbolize. 
because that's what signs do. They symbolize events on Earth. That's why I've been telling you that Mars is Nelson, Mercury is Trump. Tuesday, <coughs> there's going to be a new moon right there at Regulus in Leo. That's where the total solar eclipse occurred on the 21st of August, 2017. And they're back, and this time Mercury is joining in the cluster. Mars is not there. Mars is all by himself now. Church symbol of Venus is all by themselves now. <coughs> oh, pollution. Just for that one day, I had clean air to breathe when everybody stayed home. Looted your inheritance as Mormons. Doctrine and Covenants, section 103, verse 14. So, I'm going to get ready for the day and get some stuff done. But, uh, don't waste this time. If it doesn't happen for you before the 28th like it I'm hoping it happens for me because I'm gonna have to leave I can't trust and rely on the people I've contacted this weekend that they'll pick it up and and follow it through to help protect me from the people that are trying to destroy my life I can't count on them we obviously can't count on our government, both national and local, here in Utah. You know, the news is in Utah. I'm now seeing a whole bunch of Fox 13 clips on YouTube that had been telling everybody that we're red. And yet Herbert has manipulated the math to uh, keep us at yellow and justify opening up again and polluting our air again and murdering more people they just don't care about us so if you're not going to listen to me you have no one else to blame but yourself for trusting in the wrong people Jesus warned us Joseph warned us there will be false prophets in the latter days. False Christs. And that can only come from the Mormon church, guys. Nobody else has Christ. Nobody else does anointings in temples. And it's God's temple where it'll begin. And it's because it was taken over by Lucifer. That's his sign on the Salt Lake Temple keystone. It is Lucifer's doctrines that are within. And what are those Luciferian doctrines? It's not the washings, not the anointings. Oh, wait, there's the whole endowment ceremony where we have to give loyalty oaths. We used to have to kill ourselves if we violated those secrecy laws and commandments and oaths. More women used to have to obey their husband. It wasn't hearkened to the Lord as he hearkens unto the counsel of the Father. Hearken to the counsel of your husband as he hearkens unto the counsel of your Father. <coughs> that was the change that took place in 91. That's why my mom always lost in a fight with my dad. Was because of the temple women must obey their husbands. So my mom always lost, even though she thinks she knew better. Even though she thinks that she needs to wear the pants in the family. 
His dad is dumb. I was betrayed by my ex, who somehow found my parents, called them. <coughs> They're dying. Good riddance. But uh, interestingly, though, I will not have the problems they have health wise if I'm able to live that long. But uh, the Exodus is coming, Mormons. Are you prepared?